Britain has issued a fresh warning tonight that coronavirus will overwhelm the NHS unless everyone starts to practice social distancing and that the UK was no more than three weeks behind Italy when it comes to the spread of the disease. He's urged everyone in the UK to follow official guidance to stay at home to save lives. It comes as the NHS struck an unprecedented deal with private hospitals across England to utilise nearly their entire hospital capacity to help in the fight against the coronavirus pandemic. The NHS says the deal will provide 8,000 additional hospital beds across England, nearly 1,200 more ventilators and 700 doctors. News of the deal came hours before health officials announced that a further 56 people have died in the UK after testing positive, bringing the total here to 233. With the latest, here's Dominic Hughes. Tonight, a stark warning from the Prime Minister. The NHS is at real risk of being overwhelmed by the coronavirus. Boris Johnson warns we are just two or three weeks behind Italy and the virus is accelerating. But some good news too, in what looks like a really significant deal with private hospitals. 8,000 beds, 1,200 ventilators and thousands of staff will be made available at cost to the NHS. This is fantastic news. It will really help me and my colleagues on the front line to feel supported and to have the capacity in the hospital to admit the sickest patients to give them the care we need. My only concern about this is PPE, visors, masks, gowns. We know that we've had some shortages in the NHS recently. And I would like to see some assurances that the new staff who are coming on board are going to be protected and that there's going to be PPE enough for all of us to use. Medical staff are still extremely concerned over access to adequate protective clothing. The government says enough of the right kit is available. Meanwhile, on the first day of what is meant to be something close to lockdown and strict social distancing, in the centre of Newcastle, some people were still out and about. From the experts, though, a real sense that a moment of crisis is fast approaching. If you follow the advice, you are saving somebody's life. This is the time in your lifetime whereby your action will save somebody's life. It's as simple and as stark as that. A picture of those who are being admitted to critical care units after falling ill to the virus has begun to emerge. Data was collected on 196 patients in England, Wales and Northern Ireland. More than half of them were being looked after by hospitals in London. There's a significant difference between women and men. More than two-thirds were male, and 132 patients needed a ventilation machine to help them breathe. 16 patients sadly died. 17 were able to be discharged to regular hospital wards. The rest remained in intensive care. There is now real concern about the number of cases that are presenting in London, but also a small but significant cluster in Birmingham and the West Midlands. But the truth is this virus is spreading throughout the country. Here in Salford, the deaths of two patients were announced yesterday. Later this week, one and a half million vulnerable people, including some cancer patients and those with lung conditions, will receive a letter. It will strongly advise them to stay indoors for the next 12 weeks from Monday to shield themselves from the virus, all part of the effort to ensure the NHS is not overwhelmed in the months ahead. Dominic Hughes, BBC News. So the government then tonight stressing just how crucial it is to follow official advice to help reduce the spread of the disease. Philip Norton is in York for us. And how have people been responding there then? Well, yes, Kate, just uh, have a look here. This is York City Centre. Uh, and at this time of night, on a Saturday night, it would normally be thriving with people out enjoying nights out. There'd be the sound of music from pubs in this area, but it's almost silent. And this is a, a scene being repeat, repeated now right across the country in towns and cities with bars and restaurants closed. In fact, the only people really we've seen are, are around here in the city centre are takeaway delivery drivers who are helping businesses as they adapt to this shutdown. But there are serious concerns about the number of people who uh, ignored the advice to stay at home and went for a day out today. We've had uh, reports of seaside resorts around the country uh, reporting almost bank holiday-like conditions, including Brighton, Bridlington and Skegness. Uh, and tonight there's been uh, warnings as well from the mountain rescue teams in Wales, uh, where there have been reports that Snowden was full of people out climbing. Now, the National Trust tonight has said that it's going to be closing its parks uh, and gardens from midnight, but clearly uh, growing concerns, growing calls now for more tourist destinations to close to help prevent the spread 
of coronavirus. Indeed. Thank you, Phil. Well, meanwhile, the government is uh, also stressing there is more than enough food to go round and people have no need to stockpile. The Environment and Food Secretary, George Eustace, said people should think of others, especially health workers who needed to shop at the end of their gruelling shifts. Our political correspondent, Nick Early, has this report. An unprecedented crisis and an unprecedented challenge for the government. The Prime Minister continued to urge everyone to follow advice, warning of the consequences if people don't act together to try and stop the spread. Ministers are trying to prevent things getting worse in other ways too. In shops, long queues like this one in Sidcup this morning have become a familiar sight. Inside too, empty shelves are common. So this afternoon, a plea from the government, don't buy more than you need. Be responsible when you shop and think of others. Buying more than you need means that others may be left without. And it is making life more difficult for those frontline workers, such as our doctors and nurses and NHS support staff, who are working so hard in such difficult circumstances. You just need to stop. Stop it. People like Dawn, the critical care nurse who found shelves empty after 40 hours of work. We should all be ashamed that that has to happen. It's unacceptable. Uh, these are the very people that we will all need uh, to look after perhaps us or our loved ones in the weeks ahead. There is thought to be £1 billion more food in people's houses now compared to three weeks ago. The reasons, though, aren't always simple. My mum's 90, so she can't come on her own, so how does that work? If I come in, I look like I'm being the person who's nicking the stuff from the old people, and actually my mum can't come out to, to get it, so I've just got her, her staff. A bit chaotic and a bit strange that we come here and there's nothing available. But although supermarket shelves might look empty, the message from industry chiefs is there is enough to go around. There is plenty of food in the supply chain. The issue is around people and lorries, so getting that food right into the front line, onto our shelves, which is why we've seen shortages in some areas. The government has relaxed some rules for supermarkets, but might it have to go further? Many of the pleas that have been made so far have fallen on deaf ears. Is the government prepared to at some point intervene and perhaps introduce compulsory uh, limits on what people can buy? I don't think it is um, uh, necessary or appropriate for the government to uh, dictate this. Um, different stores on different items are working uh, together to identify what an appropriate uh, limit is. So for now, the pleas continue. The question, whether they're enough. Nick Early, BBC News. Well, a number of high street firms, including Topshop and John Lewis, have announced they are temporarily shutting their stores, although they will still trade online. The Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, has said the government should do more to provide economic security for all those affected, while one minister has admitted it will be operationally difficult to help self-employ people, as our business correspondent Katie Austin explains. Huge chunks of the economy have already felt the pain as customers stay away. Jobs have already been lost. This restaurant near Catford has struggled on with business down 90%. Then the order came to close. My staff, um, they all need help and I'm here 100% to support the staff the best I can and help for how long I can. And if the government could help with that, that would be a fantastic help. The managers here want to use yesterday's new measures designed to prevent mass redundancies. Under a grant scheme, the government will fund 80% of wages for employees who now won't be able to work, up to £2,500 a month. VAT payments will be deferred. Self-employed people aren't covered by the wage subsidy programme, but benefits are being increased. The Chancellor's latest emergency support package for the economy was welcomed by business groups as something that will save hundreds of thousands of at-risk jobs. But many self-employed people say they're facing a cliff edge too and they need more help. At the moment, one child left today, so my income has gone from £200 a day to about £40 a day, so massive, massive decrease. The association representing self-employed people wants wage subsidies extended to them too. Match their income to a certain amount, perhaps 80%, to ensure that they also can meet the cost of living, pay their bills and buy food. 
The Chief Secretary to the Treasury told the BBC government was doing what was operationally deliverable in a short timescale. We're working with banks, for example, of those self-employed uh, as to forbearance uh, and so that they can get through the cash flow challenge, looking at specific issues such as tax flexibility uh, to support them as well. So there's a range of measures that have been set out. Many businesses are trying to adapt to see this out. More temporary store closures were announced this weekend. Meanwhile, the wage grant scheme won't be ready for a few weeks and a cash flow crunch looms for the worst hit firms. Katie Austin, BBC News. Well, let's return to our main news tonight and the Prime Minister then urging everyone across the UK to uh, follow that guidance to stay at home to save lives. Our political correspondent Nick uh, Early is at Westminster for us and he couldn't be more clear on this now. It has been an extraordinary week, hasn't it, with some of the most extraordinary interventions in modern British political history. But the message from Number 10 tonight is still stark. The Prime Minister telling the country that the UK at the moment is just two or three weeks behind Italy, urging everyone to follow that advice, saying without a huge national effort to try and stop the spread of this virus, the NHS here could well be overwhelmed. In the next few days, the government will urge 1.5 million people in England alone to stay at home for 12 weeks to protect themselves from the virus. The list of who they think is the most vulnerable will be published soon. It has, as I say, been a really extraordinary period in British political history. The Prime Minister saying tonight that people should stay at home and help save literally thousands of lives.